got this old uh, joiner's plane. It's a uh, bitch to the late 1800s. And uh, I know that the uh, iron in it was made by a company called Hancock or Hanuk, Hancock, Hancock Tools. Can't read where they were located. Uh, and it used to have some writing on the back of it. I don't recall if it said Buffalo or Boston, but uh, obviously upper north, uh, northeast was where it was made. But anyway, the handle on it, when I got it, was dried and cracked and such, and unfortunately it got bumped and it broke. And I've been thinking about, you know, chiseling out this handle, making a new one, putting it in there. But then I got to looking at the plane itself, and it's got a lot of checks that go really deep into the bed. So I've decided I'm going to remake the entire plane, uh, keeping only the, the, the iron and the uh, cap iron for it and make a new one out of pecan because right now I just happen to have quite a bit of pecan. Uh, when I made the modifications to our barn over there, the previous owner of this house was a, uh, he had uh, mules and he had put hardwoods up on the inside of the barn as a kick panel for the mules. Well, a lot of that, when I took it down, turned out to be pecan. And there was a lot of oak too, uh, not as much oak as there was pecan. So I've already glued up a blank to uh, cut up. I've got to dimension it down a bit and whatnot. And then I'm just going to cut it and cut it and cut it and get it ready. And then I've got some thinner stuff that I milled out to make my sides. It's not going to be quite as long as this one was. This one was uh, 23, I think. 26, excuse me. And so the new one's probably gonna be more like 24. Yeah, I'll get 24 out of it, at least. And then I got a piece of pecan to make the wedge out of. And I'm gonna do the handle out of a piece of walnut that I got over here. So this project might take me a couple of days. So you're not going to see this video the day that I am. Normally I get my videos like I I film during the day and then I spend the evening editing and then I send it out the next morning for you guys to see. Uh, this one might not quite get there. <laughs> I think this is going to be a multiple day project. So anyway, that's what we're going to do. We're going to make a new wooden joiner's plane replicated after a very old wooden joiner's plane. So, here we go. Okay, so we got that dimensioned out so that when we add the sides, we should be back to the original width. And then it's set to the height. Now I need to figure out 
my cuts. So we need this guy back. And I've already kind of set this up a little bit. This is the angle of the iron bed. And it is, let's see, how do I do this? Looks like it's 45 degrees. No biggie there. So we'll be cutting a section off at 45 degrees to be the back half of it. And then the front one. Is getting cut. at 30 degrees. There we go. And then the bottom of the front one will actually have a small part knocked off of it here, uh, going back the other way. But we'll figure that out after we got the cuts made, the first two cuts. And I'm probably gonna go ahead and square off the end, at least of the back. I'll leave the front wild for now. And I need to know about where to cut it, I think, here. That was 14 inches, well, 14 and an eighth. I think I'll just use 14. So I will cut this, measure over, cut the 45, and then reverse that to 30, and the rest of it will be the front. And then, uh, of course, it's going to get chopped down when I get the sides glued on anyway, but hey, I don't know, maybe I should radius the ends of it. I've seen them like that before. Eh, we'll think about it. You know what? I am going to measure how long that angle is at the bottom and find out what its angle is because if it's 45, then all I have to do is cut, like up in here, the 30 degrees. So let me do that real quick. Well, it's nowhere near 45, but it's actually a little bit steeper than 45, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it out here and then I can adjust that cut uh, later on. So let's go right about there. There we go. Aha, it's sixty. That's what it is. Yep, that's about how it is in there. Okay, so that is almost perfectly how it is, the way the angle is. Might bring that up a little bit more, but that's pretty close. And then the gap at the bottom is about that wide. And of course, we've got the screw that holds the cap iron on, so we're gonna have to cut a groove in here. And yes, the iron actually goes out into the sides. So we get to play with that too. Let's see. There's parallel to the face of the thing. All right. So what I need to do is figure out where my slot is going to go. I had a pencil, where'd it go? And that's gonna be the bottom of it. And then I have to make sure that I'm going to be centered. Maybe the way to do this would be to...
get a screwdriver and take the cap iron off. And then I can center this on here. And obviously this is not wide enough for the screw, but it gives me an idea of where I need to be. go just a little bit lower than that because that is when the blade that's where it sits when the cap iron's on it that's where the blade sits right flush with the bottom of the uh, plane so we'll go just a tiny bit below that got it in there now how wide is our cap screw it is just a hair under five eighths That's not straight. It's close. Now I gotta figure out what the best way to uh, cut that slot is going to be. I think I'm going to drill, drill a series of uh, holes with a Forstner bit and then chisel it out. I think that's going to be the best way to do that. Right? Right. Here we go. Alright, so I dimensioned the sides. And we're looking pretty good here. I did have to uh, run them across the joiner. The surface wasn't... My planer was acting up a while back, and this, has, this apparently got planed while it was acting up. It had like a little wave to it, so took that out. So those are ready to go. I've also got to do the handle. And then the front's pretty pretty much done deal. I, I still want to cut that a little steeper angle, but uh, I'll probably just do that off camera when I have a moment. Yeah, so the other fun part about this is you'll notice on this guy that the there's a the part where the wedge sticks in there and holds the iron down as like a shelf there and a tapered uh, what would you call that tapered dado and then it's uh, made so the chips will come out a little easier up here so it thins out up here at the top so I've actually got to figure out where all that's happening and make those cuts in this in, the, in my new sides before I actually glue them on, which is challenging. Because <laughs> when I glue them on, if they slide and get in the wrong place, then I'm screwed. So I'll probably have to come up with a good way to uh, not let that happen. So basically, 
I have to decide where, how big that opening on the mouth opening is going to be. This is one half of an inch. Well, I'm pretty close. There we go. There's a half an inch. So that'll tell me where this and this are. And I need to do that to this side as well. I haven't jointed the bandsaw on edges of these yet, so I'm trying to uh, make sure that I get the bandsaw edges up where it'll be easier to deal with them afterwards. I'm going to mark where these intersect with this. And mark my angles there. I guess I really don't need the bottom angle on there because it's going to be solid glue there. Yeah. All right. So there's my marks for that. Now I can figure out the wedge angle. I'm going to do that by putting the cap iron along the uh, line that is the bed of the plane. And then I'm going to lay this little wedge right up here. about where it used to fit in the old plane and then draw the line. I'm just gotta go all the way down. There we go. That looks pretty good. Now we'll do the same for this side. Just in case you're wondering, no, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just trying to do it. <laughs> I read some books. I watched some videos. Does that count? You know what? I should have marked that wedge when I did this over here so I'd know what level it was at. Because these two need to be pretty much the same. Put a mark on my wedge. There we go. And then I can transfer that mark across to the other side. Now I should be able to do this one and have it come out, you know, relatively close to the same. You know, that's the fun thing about doing things that you haven't ever done before and just kind of figuring it out as you go you know kind of like life you just kind of have to figure it out as you go there we go because I freehanded it. It's not straight. So now I gotta figure out how deep those need to be. And we'll have to cut those. This is how we figure out how deep they need to be.
chisel that out. You know what, I think I need a, uh, a, uh, curve to ride there. Okay, where was I? Wow. So I started this two days ago, got that first part done, and uh, the next day I didn't get a chance to work on it. So here we are on the day three, <laughs> and I'm right back where I was. But got the uh, little dados done, and uh, got the, uh, I've clamped them up here on the sides, you know, put them where they're supposed to be, and clamped it, and then made sure that this was going to fit down in there, and it does, so we're in good shape there. Next thing is down here at the bottom uh, where the chips are coming up. Right now, this would catch the chips. So I've got to cut at an angle and then taper that out, which is how the old one was done. I don't know that you're gonna be able to see up in there or down in there. But anyway, there's, there's a taper on the sides here that goes out to the, the outsides of the plane. So that's what I'm doing next. And I need my saw back. look and work like a plane here. That's where we're at so far. There. <laughs> so now I need to cut my handle and put a uh, mortise in here for the handle to set in. And we should be pretty close to getting it uh, put together. I'll have to make my new wedge for this part. And now, all right, let's do this. Uh, let's get the handle cut out, shall we? See you at the bandsaw.
Just kidding. So you get the drill press first. So I sanded the handle up off camera, as I figured you guys didn't want to watch a bunch of sanding uh, again. <laughs> and now I'm going to mark out where this is going on the body of this. Now, one of the things that I have to pay attention to is that this has to go by that handle when it's down in there. So it's actually going to be there. So I need to be able to slide it past that when it's at that height. And that looks like about it right there. So then I'll just put my marking knife right there. And work it across to the middle. And then I will mark that out. First I want to make sure it's centered and I need my tape measure for that. Okay, so three quarters. I got five eighths of that side. I need to move over one sixteenth, and there it is. Now we get the same back, and we are. And now I'll just hold that down real good and mark him out.
I can see that well enough. So now all you do is drill it down. That, well, I think that's about three quarters. Yep, drill it down three quarters of an inch, three quarters of an inch wide. Scrape out the remainder and then pop a handle in. And we can finally move forward to like gluing this thing together. Yeehaw! Let's do it.